All right, we're going to uh, unmask this flame job. See how it came out. That's today's episode of what's it going to be. But what we want to do is we don't really want to take it all at once. We don't want to take it all at once. We just want to get the paper off. And then we want to be very careful pulling the, the line off because the fine line tape off because we don't want to go back if we have any problems. And just ripping it all off can create problems. So we'll take our time, get some off. Pulling the paper off at this point, and come back and we'll, we'll yank off the orange tape. As we pull the paper, it wants to. Sometimes it wants to grab the tape too. So. One of the difficulties is getting enough color on there so you can't see through it when it's done, but at the same time, not so much that you get a big edge here. Yeah. More than likely what's going to happen is we're going to, this is for the show, so we got to get it in the show. It's going to look really good. But what will probably happen is we'll get it in the show, and then I'll get it back and we'll sand it all down one more time. All the flat clear that'll be on it. We'll sand it all down and um, level it out, get rid of the edges, and then give it another coat of, another couple coats of clear. So you don't feel the edges and everything looks nice and even. You look across it, you don't see bumps in it, you know, around the flames and stuff. Like you see so many other times. just not the kind of thing that we do here. This is the paint for the V-Rod with the supercharger on it. Maybe you should have a flamethrower on it because now we got flames on it. We know it's going to be tearing it up. Tony told me yesterday that that's... Um, Supercharger they put on it. I forget what brand it was now. It's about 100 horse. Adds 100 horsepower, so the bike will be a V rod now. It's going to go up to 200 horsepower. I guess it doesn't seem like a lot by today's standard, but that's a lot of horsepower on a bike for sure. Especially a thundering Harley, you know. It's not like one of them damn sewing machines. One of them damn sewing machine. Tape got to stay. time lapse thing on this because uh, it's going to be a long way to the end. We'll just get the paper off it. Let's grab another one. He grabs this orange tape. You don't want that. You want that to stay behind. You want that to stay behind until we're ready to pull it off. Two fenders is like doing a hood of a car. <laughs> They're huge. They're huge. Is there a bald spot back there? I don't think so. I hope not. Have to get some low gain. Get some low gain. 
There's a bald spot. black flame with an orange pinstripe. videos that I've been posting lately more more so than before it's just gotten so easy that uh, I was thinking about the way I originally started to advertise when I first started it was the classified ads in the Sunday paper I mean, if you can anybody who used, used to look through the Sunday paper for a job or a car I don't know if it's that long ago it's probably 20 years ago but now you look in the paper there's nothing in there but I used to run a little ad, custom paint, when I first started out. When I was, I still had a real job. And I was trying to get established on the, and doing what I liked, which was painting bikes. So I put an ad in the paper, and I'd get some work out of that. It actually did pretty good. And then got away from that. The internet started, computer started. Fortunately, I got in early. I uh, had a friend of mine in Colorado, Bob. Anybody who rides a motorcycle probably knew Colorado Bob. Colorado Bob one day was talking about a relative nephew or something. And he was talking about how he was getting involved. Colorado was getting involved in computers, starting to learn how to use them and stuff. And being a little old school, I mean, I wasn't old, but we didn't weren't we weren't familiar with computers. You know, I mean, they weren't in school or anything, so the kids weren't even familiar with them. But anyways, he was telling me about it, and I was like, yeah, what are you doing with that? Mess around computers. What's wrong with you? He's like, well, I'll be damned if any 10-year-old's going to know more than I do. So uh, I gave that some thought. I'm like, man, you know, that's right. I don't want some, <laughs> I want some kid knowing more than me. So I uh, went right out and got a computer and started learning that, and then uh, set up a web page because I'd have customers call, and they don't know me, so they want to wonder about my stuff, what your work looked like, and what have you. So I had a web page, and I put all the pictures up on there, and different jobs that I had done. And uh, that was the beginning of the e-commerce way of advertising. And then I think it was MySpace that came out, and everybody's like, oh, oh, you gotta be on MySpace, you gotta be, that's where all the businesses are. So I think I went on MySpace a little bit, but I just wasn't really into it. I had my own web page. Most of those, most of the people on there didn't have a web page. Oh, we crashed the camera. Bear with me a second here. Get you set back up.
Are good? Can you see? Can you see? Everything okay? Alright, so anyway, where was I? We were talking about MySpace. So I blew the MySpace off because then as time went by, we started to find out that that was really more just for luck, like a band's, a band's web page where they could promote their music and socialize and get work in it. So then it was Facebook. I think it was Facebook. I think there was one more in between there. Anyways, so that was Facebook. And we've got a Spikes page for quite a while now. And not really much work comes off of there. It's mostly just for fun. Just for fun so people can see and watch what's going on, I guess. But uh, I've started putting a lot of YouTubes up on, I mean, a lot of videos up on YouTube. A little mixed up there. And uh, they get a lot more play than anything else, I think, on YouTube. So I think we're going to do more videos. Hope we just focus on our web page. Do more videos and use YouTube for a while and see how that works out. Um, that's really how you just you just got to keep at it, man. Just keep developing it. Keep well, stay current with forms of uh, getting your getting exposure. A lot of my work doesn't even most of my work doesn't even come from the area. I would say you know the shops in the area, but. Privately, a lot of shop comes from across the state, other states. Um, like that take up bike we had last year, I mean, that's out of Rhode Island. Not last year. Actually, I guess that was last year, wasn't it? I think we just finished that first of this year, maybe. The end of December. Yeah, it was done. Yeah. Uh, yep, a lot of work from out the Cape Way, eastern part of the state, New Hampshire, Vermont, Rhode Island. Occasionally, something from across the country. That's a little more difficult though. You have to trust the person. You know, you're sending your stuff all the way across the country. I get it. You know, you you don't know, and you got to pay, and hopefully it comes, and it's it's everything you were told it would be. And the other thing about shipping stuff around is, I mean, I ship stuff around, and everybody says it looks great when it gets there. I don't know. I never get to see it because I'm not where they are, but. If there's any kind of box marks, I mean, that's why I usually won't even, I don't ship any denim stuff because you just rub on a little bit and you, you can make a, sh a shiny spot in it and, and there's no getting that out. So all that stuff I try to deliver. So unless you're local and I can jump in the car and bring it to you, I probably wouldn't ship that around the country for sure. We're getting this unwrapped. So far so good, everything looks pretty good. And some of the things you want to watch for is you'll, if, the t if the paint blows through a, a tape edge, and you can see it on the, um, probably can't see it there, but you'll see a little fuzziness outside the sharp line that kind of creeped under the paper there. But, didn't get to the silver. That's all that matters. What we're going to do with this next is get it all cleaned up, wipe it down good, brush off any of the flaky edges and then we're going to go around with the airbrush and drop shadow everything give it a three dimensional give it a little more of a three dimensional look i think that's what we're going to do it's pretty good like this but it'll look even better than like that in the beginning in the beginning something like this i would clear it now i'd clear it and i'd level it out so that was kind of a good thing we get leveled out right now and then whatever you put on top would be nice and flat. But um, in the old days, I'd clear this because I wouldn't want nothing to happen to it. And uh, sand it all back down, get out the airbrush, go around and drop shadow everything. And sometimes if you miss, you know, you, you screw up or you went in the wrong direction. As you're fanning off, as you're coming off one of these tips, you know, you've got to be very careful. You want it to separate just like that's floating and you want to have a nice shadow that ends you know, in a place that makes sense with the flame. Sometimes they go a little past the shadow, depending on where the light's at. So I would go back, and that way if you made a mistake, if you had clear on it, it was all sanded down, ready for re-clear, everything was nice and flat, you put your drop shadows on, and say you make a mistake, 
you know, somebody walks in, a dog jumps on you, whatever could happen while you're in the booth doing that, you can always just wipe it off because you have the clear protecting it, and then you can go back. But it's been a while now. I've gotten pretty good with the airbrush. The mistakes are few and far between. So this one combined that the fact that we're on a time schedule that doesn't allow for error I mean, if we have a big error I don't know if we'd even put it in the show at that point so far it's looking really good though I've got my own videographer I don't know if uh, Nobody, anybody knows yet. Jane's going to be doing uh, the videos, I think, pretty soon, except for like this, where I'm just grabbing it while I'm in the middle of working. But she's going to come down and document some of the stuff we do. In fact, we're going to go and uh, go up to one of the shops tomorrow. The shop where this bike is, that's American Muscle. And we're going to check the bike out, see what's going on for the show. Uh, talk to the boys a little bit, get some idea of their plans for the future of American Muscle, and uh, look at that, we're almost done here, a couple more left to go, we wrapped it up on this one, I have to say, it came out good, the biggest problem doing this is you've got to get the mixture consistency of the paint to such that the cover good you can put on a few coats you get a minimal edge this edge will be minimal and you will um, and then it'll all pull off the paint I mean the tape will pull off nice and not take any paint with it take any paint with it or give you any fuzzy edges you know you'll get a little mist that's what we're going to go around we'll go wash this now to take off some of the fuzziness it's actually the edge from the tape you know? so that's it that's our finished flame job look at that oh, I stabbed myself with a razor knife it's a lot of just flame 